All right, so we're going to go over a updated method for creating a mandala in Illustrator. This is something, a video that I've been meaning to record for a while because my previous mandala video is probably my most popular video on YouTube. Um, a lot of people have trouble with it. Some people, you know, find it um, a little bit difficult. So hopefully this method is a little bit easier. Um, I did find this method from a YouTube page. Um, uh, Andre Croker Dagubi. Um, someone in the comments of my previous video pointed out that he has a little bit of a better method of working on this. So this is the method that I'm going to show you today with sort of like my own little um, updates to it. Check out his channel. He's got a lot of really great uh, illustrator tutorials. So we're going to start by creating my go-to illustrator size, which is uh, 3,000 by 3,000. This is generally the size that I use for just about everything. So we'll hit create, or at least to start with. Um, and uh, we're going to start in a very similar way that we did in the previous video. We're going to start with the polar grid tool. So I'm going to double click that to get our options. And we're going to do an eight pointed mandala. So we need to double the sides or double the numbers of whatever pointed mandala you want to do. This works for just about any number except for the number seven. Um, for an example, like if we do uh, a seven sided mandala and that would be, you know, we'd eventually need to divide 360 by seven. And that gives us some ridiculous number like 51.4285714. And I don't want to have to deal with that number. So um, seven is not a great number to use this uh, method with. Um, but <clears throat> we're going to do an eight-sided. We're going to start with 16 radial dividers and zero concentric dividers. I generally like to make this the uh, bigger than my artboard. So I'm holding down shift uh, while I'm dragging out my polar grid. I like to make this bigger than my artboard in case I want to make the mandala bigger or um, you know, change the, the layout of the artboard or maybe have some shapes outside of the artboard. So that's the reason I like to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to go up to my alignment options, which are in my properties menu up here if you're set to Essentials Classic and your properties menu here they won't show up because I only have one uh, object selected. So um, the first thing I want to do is we'll go to we'll just bring up our align options here. I want to make sure that I'm set to align to artboard and I'm going to center align that both horizontal and vertically. And the next thing I want to do is ungroup this polar grid. If you look at your layers you'll notice that you have quite a few groups here and I just want to ungroup them all so they're out sort of outside of that group system. So I'm going to go to Object Ungroup, which is Shift Control G, and I'm going to do that one more time. Shift Control G to ungroup everything. And then I'm just going to select all the lines except for the two top left uh, sort of pie slices there. So I don't want to delete those, but I'm going to delete everything else. And let me go ahead and make my stroke a little bit thicker just so you can kind of see what's going on. So I want to join these up so they're one shape. So I'm going to go to my direct selection tool and I'm going to just marquee over those two bottom points. And I'm going to go to object, path, join. And for this top part of the triangle, I can just use my pen tool to sort of make that a closed loop shape. All right, so now we're set to make our effect or apply our appearance to our mandala. So I'm going to start by changing the name of this top layer to uh, mandala appearance. Not sure if I spelled that right, but it's good enough for me. Um, and it's very important that you apply the effect to this top layer. So this is a, a critical mistake that a lot of people make is they apply, they just have one of these other objects selected and they apply the effect to them. Very important that we apply the effect to this very top layer at this point. So we're going to go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. 
And first we just want to get the mirrored symmetry. So I just want to mirror this side over to this side. So we're going to do that by reflecting on X and we're reflecting one copy and hit OK. So next I'm going to apply a new effect. We can go ahead and you know start drawing in here and seeing that we're getting a, a mirrored effect here on this layer. So next I want to radially duplicate them around to get my radial symmetry. So again I want to make very sure that I have the proper layer selected when I'm applying the effect. So I'm going to select that top layer. I'm going to go back to Effect, Distort and Transform, and Transform. It's going to give us a warning saying we already have an appearance on this layer. Do we want to change the one that we currently have applied or do we want to apply a new effect? And We want to apply a new effect. And for this one we're going to rotate. So we have an eight-pointed mandala. Uh, we're going to rotate that around 360 degrees. So that is 45 degrees. So eight divided by or 360 divided by eight is 45 degrees. And I want seven copies. I don't want eight copies because I already have the initial instance of this top one here. So if I do eight copies, I'm going to get a uh, a top, uh, an instance on top of this instance, which I, I don't want. So I'm going to do seven copies and hit OK. And now we have our mandala. So I can go in and start making shapes. Now the next problem that we're going to face is the fact that we are overlapping our shape. So if I go beyond this area, um, the shapes do overlap. And another problem that we'll run into is at this point if I make a new or I maybe I accidentally make a mark out here, it's going to mess up our symmetry. So the next thing I want to do is mask out uh, everything else except for what is in what I'm drawing in this specific little pie slice here. So to do that, we're not going to use a clipping mask from here. We're going to use an opacity uh, mask instead. So um, <clears throat> this is where we, we have to do like one little extra step to get this to work properly. So if I apply an opacity map mask to this layer, it's going to basically mask out our effects too. So I don't want that. So what I want to do is I want to create a new layer. We're going to name this um, Mandala Masked. And I'm going to put this inside of the Mandala Appearances layer and I'm going to put our shapes inside of that layer. So we're going to have this sort of three-tiered system. So you should have your mandala uh, appearance layer that has your effects applied to them and you can click on this guy right here to see your transform effects on that layer. Then we're going to have our mandala mask layer which we're going to use to mask all of our shapes below it. So to do that we're going to use that triangle that we created up here. So I'm just going to copy that triangle, Control C. Then I'm going to select our mandala masked layer <clears throat> and I'm going to go to its opacity options. So you can find the opacity options by either clicking in the on the word opacity here or going to your properties menu and clicking on the word opacity there. So I like to use Essentials Classic so I get my options up here as well. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to click on the word Opacity. I'm going to say click on Make Mask. Everything disappears because basically we're applying a black mask to it. And black means everything's transparent. So to uh, insert our little triangle into this, what we're going to do is click on that black thumbnail. Go over and click on our Layers tab and that will switch to Layers Opacity Mask. From here I can Control shift v to paste our triangle into that layer and I'm going to make that white with no fill color or no stroke color. <clears throat> and now that is masking out that layer for us. Now to get back to our other layers we're going to go back to the word Opacity, click on this other thumbnail and then click on our layer opacity mask again. So now you'll see that that is underlined, meaning that it has a opacity mask applied to it. And as we draw in here, we're now getting our masked mandala shape. 
Now, the one sort of uh, downside of using this method is that I can't select any of these other shapes except for what is in that one pie slice. So if I want to uh, make any sort of variation in the other radial uh, symmetry options, I would need to go to Object, uh, make sure we select our top layer, go to Object, Expand Appearance, and then that would make everything um, actual shapes. At any point you can hide this triangle layer and your circle layer. You don't want to delete them, especially the circle layer, because that is where you're getting your um, your symmetry from. It's basically basing your symmetry off the center point of that circle because it's the biggest object on that layer. So you don't want to get rid of that layer. You can hide it, but don't delete it. Um, and then you can hide that at some point to get your completed mandala. Now the other thing I want to quickly point out here is that whenever you go to export this as a JPEG or PNG, uh, you want to go to File, Export, Export for Screens, because you're going to get the option here to set this as uh, Art Optimized. If you set it to Type or None, you may get little white lines between each individual mandala slice. So make sure you have this set to Art Optimized whenever you save out as a JPEG. All right, that's it, guys. That's an, an easier method for creating a mandala. Hopefully one day uh, Illustrator will get some symmetry functionality uh, and we won't need to need this compl uh, complicated setup. But in the meantime, I hope this is a much easier method to create your mandalas, um, easier to set up uh, and just sort of easier to work with because you're not going in and out of symbols. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think, uh, if there's any you know, critiques you have or, you know, ways you can improve this method. Uh, and let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see. I've been doing a lot of live streams uh, lately of just 3D modeling, but I do love making Illustrator and Photoshop tutorials as well.